In this step, we're going to look at how you add a normal map to a material. So before we get started, I'll give you a really simple explanation of what a normal map is. What a normal map is used for is when it's on, when that material that contains a normal map is on a mesh, it controls what will happen when light hits a particular pixel. And they can be used to make surfaces look bumpy uh, or smooth, depending on what your desired outcome is. In our case, we want this grass to look rougher. So we're going to use uh, the normal map to achieve that. So we're going to go back into the material editor. Here we are. And basically we're going to use another texture sample node, but this time we're going to put it into the normal input. So I'm going to show you a different way to include a texture sample node. This is the way that I usually use. It's a lot quicker. So to do that, hold the T key down like so, and then left click somewhere in the material graph. Hey, there we go. And it just creates one like that. So there are a lot of little um, keyboard shortcuts like that in here. And again, because I had um, this texture selected in the level editor, it's made the assumption that I want this one, but I don't, so I'll swap it in a minute. So I'm just gonna ping that into normal, first of all. And then I'm gonna go over here, and you can see if you choose the wrong one, it makes it look all kinds of wrong. So let's choose the proper one. So it's gonna be grass underscore N. And you see, if you're downloading my textures, there are two different grasses in there, and that's so that you can add some variation. Uh, but we're just sticking to grass without the number two on it for now. So grass underscore N. Normal maps generally look purple, um, so keep that in mind. And now you can see that this has been updated and it looks nice and rough. And that's the result we're going for. So again, we're going to save the material. Click on the save button. And when it's done saving, we'll have a look at the effect that's had. And now the grass looks a lot better. It, it looks a lot more textured. There's um, there's more to it. So if we can zoom in on it a little bit as well, as long as you don't get too close, it looks pretty cool. So there you go. That's our grass now. So that's really coming along. Now, the big problem with this is that it looks really tiled. You can see that it's a tile texture. And for this practice material that we're making, we're not actually going to fix that. We'll fix that when we do the proper landscape material a little bit later. Um, but for now, I'm pretty happy with this. What I'm not happy with though, or not yet, is the organization of this. Now, even though it's a simple material, and believe me, this is dead simple, the one that we've made here, it's a really good habit to get into naming and commenting on everything in here. So that's what we're gonna cover in the next step, how to use comments in the material editor. So I'll see you in the next step for that. Thanks for watching. If you really want to take your learning further than I can cover in this series, then I highly recommend checking out Pluralsight. They have loads of really detailed video courses covering game art and game development using Unreal Engine 4. When I learned how to use Unreal a couple of years ago, this is where I went, and I log in regularly to take a new course and improve my skills. I recommend checking out the Introduction to Unreal Engine 4 course by Joshua Kinning. This is really good and offers a good overview of what you can do in Unreal. You can get a free 10 day trial by using my link in the video description and you get full access to all of their courses for that time. At the end of your 10 days you can either subscribe for more or cancel, totally up to you. It's got to be worth a free trial though right? I'd like to say a massive thank you to my patrons. Your support helps me to keep making videos like this one and I really appreciate each and every one of you. It really blows my mind that people will support my channel and my work by pledging their money through Patreon. So again, thank you all so, so much. If you aren't already a patron and you'd like to offer your support, then please go to patreon.com forward slash Shane Whittington.